Well, all vitamins are necessary in human nutrition. Uh, one of the most interesting of all vitamins would have to be vitamin B12. There's a lot of myth and mythology surrounding vitamin B12, which hopefully I'll clear up in this video. Vitamin B12 is the largest and most complex of all vitamins, and in fact is the only vitamin that actually contains a mineral and its structure. That mineral is cobalt. And for this reason, one of the common names for vitamin B12, other than B12, of course, is cobalamin, with a cobal standing for cobalt. Uh, other names include cyanocobalamin, which is the most common type found in food supplements. It's usually synthetic, and uh, you know it's, it has to be converted into more active forms in the body, which I'll get to later. Then there's a form called hydroxycobalamin, which is not found in supplements, but is used as a pharmaceutical preparation. An interesting uh, fact about hydroxycobalamin is that uh, if you're ever exposed to cyanide, uh, you want to probably have some hydroxycobalamin handy because it neutralizes cyanide. It forms a complex with uh, the poison cyanide and causes it to be excreted harmlessly out of the body. That's one use of hydroxycobalamin. Uh, and then they have a form called methocobalamin. Methylcobalamin is the, let's say, the activated form of vitamin B12 in the body. Uh, methylcobalamin also can enter the brain a lot easier than other forms, including the more common cyanocobalamin. Uh, uh, so, uh, now, be, interesting thing about B12 that you have to understand, it's only found in animal protein foods, such as organ meats, egg yolks, and fish. For example, an ounce of uh, salmon contains two micrograms of B12. Now, the actual daily requirement uh, set for B12 for human adults, it's 2.4 micrograms a day. That's it, just 2.54, I'm sorry, 2.4 micrograms a day. And if you eat just one ounce of salmon, you get almost the entire uh, daily requirement in, in, uh, in that one meal. Vitamin B, what does vitamin B12 do? It's needed for the production of red blood cells. It's needed for DNA synthesis, which is involved in cell reproduction. Uh, it's needed for uh, energy production, nervous system functions, and brain function. In fact, recent studies show that a lack of B12 in older people causes the brain to excessively shrink. And the deficiency of B12 produces some of the same symptoms as Alzheimer's disease. In other words, there's a lot of older people walking around that some that doctors may have di di misdiagnosed as having Alzheimer's disease who actually have a long-standing vitamin B12 deficiency. And uh, there's a good reason for that, because older people, which I'll explain in a minute, are much more prone to a B12 deficiency than younger people, and I'll explain why. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now, the older people are more prone to B12 deficiencies because of age-related changes in the stomach, what they call atrophic gastritis. What happens is, you know, to absorb vitamin B12 from food, you have to have uh, an acid production in your stomach. The cells in the stomach... Or the, uh, or the gastric mucosa, to be more exact, that produce acid are called the parietal cells. Uh, in a lot of older people and certain people with certain autoimmune diseases, the parietal, parietal cells either shrink or disappear or just atrophy to the point of where there's not enough acid released. If you don't have sufficient acid released when you eat a food meal, the B12, uh, B12 will not be absorbed because that acid is needed to stimulate the release of a protein secreted by the uh, the stomach wall called the intrinsic factor. But what happens first is, you know, B12, when you eat it in natural protein foods, it's kind of locked in with the protein. So when you eat the protein, you know, the first stage of digestion of protein is the, uh, uh, is the breakdown of, of uh, the large protein mo molecules in the stomach by hydrochloric acid and pepsin. Uh, that's a digestive enzyme. What happens there is the uh, protein, uh, the whole protein is converted into a large amino acid chain called polypeptides. But also in that process, any B12 that's found in the food associated with the protein is released from the protein by, you know, by the uh, acid, by the, you know, the acid produ production in the stomach. So without the acid production in the stomach, the B12 remains locked onto the protein and you don't absorb it. Uh, what, it, what, it, what specifically happens is as soon as the acid acts on the protein food, 
uh, the uh, the B12 is released from the protein and immediately co combines with a, another uh, carrier called transcobalamin 1. Transcobalamin 1 then hands off the B12 to the intrinsic factor, which is produced in the stomach gut wall. The intrinsic factor is the limiting uh, aspect, if you want to call it, of oral vitamin B12 absorption. Without intrinsic factor, there is no uh, uh, absorption of B12. In fact, a uh, lack of intrinsic factor causes a particular type of anemia called pernicious anemia, which is considered a B12 deficiency. It's called pernicious anemia because uh, normally when you supply iron, the most common form of anemia is caused by a lack of iron. And, you know, years ago when the doctors gave iron to people who they thought had iron deficiency anemia, uh, the iron didn't do anything because these people actually had a B12 deficiency, which causes a different type of anemia. So because the iron didn't cure the anemia these people had, they, you, they labeled it pernicious. That's meaning really bad. You know, that's what, that's what they called it. Uh, B12, uh, also, uh, B12 is most famous also for the production of red blood cells. And it works uh, in that respect in conjunction with another uh, B-complex vitamin called folic acid. Now, folic acid is found mainly in vegetables, and that's where the word folic, folia, for, for vegetable. But folic acid, the bad part about this is that uh, you can be uh, deficient in v B12, but if you're getting enough folic acid from other food sources, it'll mask the B12 deficiency. So you can you know, wind up with some serious neural de de degeneration problems if you're getting enough folic acid but not enough B12. Uh, uh, so uh, B6 also neutralizes the... Uh, also I, should, I should mention here that uh, there's an amino acid called methionine, which is an a essential amino acid found in all protein foods. Uh, now, the methionine is important for, for, for say, the synthesis of creatine uh, as a methyl donor for the production of choline and, and other nutrients uh, for DNA uh, synthesis. It's very important, but unfortunately, methionine ha can be converted into a toxic byproduct called homocysteine. And it turns out that a combination of vitamin B12, folic acid, and vitamin B6 neutralize homocysteine. They break it down so it's harmlessly excreted. If homocysteine builds up in your body, it can cause brain damage and cardiovascular disease and even cancer. So anyone who's uh, flat statement, if you're eating a high protein diet and you're not getting sufficient B12, folic acid, and B6, you're, you're in severe danger because your body is probably producing a lot of homocysteine, which is causing silent damage to your blood vessels and to your brain. And by the way, anabolic steroids also increase homocysteine. So it's another reason even steroid users need to be real careful of their B12, folic acid, and B6 intake. You don't need a lot, you know, but you have to have a certain amount, let's say two, uh, four micrograms of B12, you know, uh, what? 10 milligrams of B6 and, uh, you know, 400 micrograms of folic acid would do the trick. It's not a lot. You know, it's, 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 easy, it's easy to get. Most vitamin supplements contain that much. As I said, a lack of B12 produces this pernicious anemia, and it can cause such symptoms as fatigue, low energy, nausea, diarrhea, decreased appetite, and weak muscles, headaches, and tingling, and tingling sensations because it affects the... the uh, the uh, expression of neurons, in other words, the the uh, the, the uh, you know the way ne neurons work, basically, uh, you know the the uh, uh, <laughs> the conduction of nerves, I should say. B12 is also needed to maintain and protect the myelin sheath. What is the myelin sheath? The myelin sheath is a fatty layer that insulates and coats neurons. It allows the rapid transmission of neural impulses. Uh, when, when, the, when the myelin sheath breaks down, sometimes it breaks down in patches. That results in a disease called multiple sclerosis, which is a very serious disease. It can, can put people in wheelchairs or, you know, it, you know, it could just completely destroy your body. But, you know, B12 is needed to maintain the myelin sheath. And what's interesting about this is, uh, you, you know, you probably heard how athletes, as they get older, they tend to lose speed. I've seen this happen with boxers and various athletes in all sports and uh, a lot of the theory of why that happens is a gradual uh, thinness or breakdown of the myelin sheath that surrounds neurons so what happens is the nerve transmission to muscles 
isn't as rapid, so they lose speed. Now, does this mean that taking B12 will help you maintain speed in sports as you get older? I don't, I'm don't. i not really sure about that, but I can tell you one thing for sure. If you lack B12, it'll accentuate the, let's say, the uh, the loss of, of myelin, uh, uh, the loss of myelin around neurons will, and will definitely add to the re reduction of, in speed that occurs with normal aging. Uh, uh, now, if you take, uh, for example, uh, uh, B12, even in a supplement form, it's not because it's very, very complex. Like I say, it's the largest vitamin. Uh, you only absorb a small amount. If you take 500 micrograms of an oral supplement of B12, you only absorb about 10 micrograms. Now, a lot of people uh, take what they, fall, uh, what they call these sublingual uh, B12 uh, uh, supplements. These things are usually flavored, and you put them under your tongue, and the idea is that, uh, you know, you absorb it through the ga the, uh, the mucosa in the mouth that gets into the uh, uh, the uh, plasma, blood plasma, and therefore, you know, it, it uh, bypasses the need for the uh, intrinsic factor and all that. But you should know that the intrinsic factor applies mainly to B12 in food. When you take B12 in supplements, you don't have to worry too much about the intrinsic factor because the B12 in supplements is not attached to any food protein, so it's already free. Um, now, the B B12 deficiency is common. It affects between 1.5% and 15% of the general population. The authors of a review of randomized controlled trials comparing oral with intramuscular B12. I should mention that before I tell you about this study, B12 injections have always been a popular uh, energy f uh, substance. A lot of people think that if they take B12 injections, it will increase their energy and make them feel better. I've spoken to many, many people over the years who swear by B12 injections. Uh, now, I will tell you that, you know, obviously, if you take an injection of B12 compared to an oral intake, you're going to get a greater uptake of B12. However, uh, I think B12 injections still work best for those who are outright deficient in B12. In other words, if you're, if you're not deficient in B12, you're, you're not going to get a big effect from B12 infect, uh, in, injections as far as energy. And any effect you get is more likely due to the placebo effect. In other words, you think it's going to increase your energy, so it does. And I think that's the, uh, the majority of cases of people with B12 injections. And if you give it to a vegan or somebody who's actually lacking in B12, you're going to see a huge difference in, in energy. Now, the authors of this randomized controlled trial compared oral with intramuscular B12. They concluded that ingesting 2,000 micrograms of an oral B12 supplement followed by a decreased daily dose of 1,000 micrograms and then 1,000 micrograms weekly and finally monthly might be as, in, as effective as the intramuscular injection. In other words, if you take enough of the uh, oral B12 supplements, it's just as good as taking B12 injections. Surgery, you, know, you should also know that surgical procedures in the gastrointestinal tract, such as weight loss surgery, where, for example, gastric see, uh, sleeve surgery, uh, this is a procedure they give to uh, morbidly obese people where they remove three quarters of their stomach in an effort uh, to treat intractable obesity. In other words, these people simply cannot diet or cannot exercise. They're grossly obese. I'm talking well over 400 pounds. So they remove three quarters of their stomach. However, uh, this often, uh, you know, when you move that much of the stomach, remember the stomach acid and those Pareto cells are needed to absorb B12 from food. So this usually results of the loss of cells that secrete hydrochloric acid and the intrinsic factor. And this reduces the amount of B12, particularly food-bound B12, uh, that the body releases and absorbs. So, uh, you know, uh, also uh, surgical removal of the distal ileum uh, or the intestine also can result in an inability to absorb B12. Uh, so people that have that bariatric surgery where they remove your, you know, your uh, large portion of your stomach are at special risk for a B12 deficiency. And they definitely, without question, need to take B12 supplements or they're going to be in big, big trouble. Now, I should tell you that your liver can store uh, up to five years of B12. So, you know, if you've been having enough B12 consistently, and let's say you have this surgery, or for some reason you stop eating foods with B12, for example, let's say you become a vegan, you'll have enough B12 stored in your liver to last for five years. So the results won't show up for five years, but once they do show up, uh, a lot of these signs of, of or the, uh, the manifestations of a B12 deficiency are very subtle and very dangerous. For example, spinal degeneration, permanent damage to your spinal nerves can occur with a long-standing B12 deficiency.
As I said, strict vegetarians and vegans are at greater risk than lacto-ovo-vegetarians and non-vegetarians of developing a B12 deficiency because natural sources of B12 are limited to animal protein foods. Now, if you go online and you look, you look at these various vegan sites and vegan advocate videos, they say that's bull. They say that uh, it's nonsense. You can get all the B12 you need from vegan sources, and they cite sources such as spirulina, certain forms of algae. However, these sources, uh, when they've been tested, are not uh, reliable sources of B12. In other words, they're not bi as bioavailable as the animal sources, so they, you cannot depend on these, let's say, non-animal protein sources uh, as a source of B12. The, the bottom line, if you're a vegan or you're a vegetarian and you're not eating animal protein foods, uh, you better take a B12 deficiency or you're going to be in big, big trouble. I'm talking um, shrinkage of the brain, horrible damage to your nervous system. Uh, it's going to happen. It, it takes about five years, but it will happen if you don't take a B12 supplement. Now, there's certain drugs that uh, some of these are, are popularly uh, prescribed by physicians that, uh, you know, they inhibit the flow of acid. Uh, people that, for example, that have uh, ulcers and, and certain diseases like that, they take drugs such as uh, protein pump inhibitors. Uh, example of that is Prilosec and Provacid. And uh, these are, again, used to treat uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease where the food comes up on you and burns out your esophagus and peptic ulcer disease. Uh, of course, because these uh, uh, drugs limit acid uh, production, in the uh, in the stomach, and or by by doing so, limit the intrinsic factor production. You can get a, a B12 deficiency easily by using these drugs. Uh, and, you know, but there's another drug which I use myself. Uh, it's called metformin. I use it because I'm, I'm pre-diabetic, because of extremely bad genetics on both sides of my family. Both my grandfathers had diabetes, and my father died from the complications of diabetes related to cardiovascular disease. Uh, I started to show up with some blood sugar problems a couple of years ago, so I started using metformin. Um, I could do a whole video on metformin. I did some additional re research. I found that metformin has a lot of benefits, including it, it, it has a slight fat loss effect, and it also, by uh, stimulating a chemical called uh, AMPK, it can uh, offer life extension benefits, and it can all, also offset some of the damage uh, that occurs with a, uh, a uh, long-standing high protein intake as in relation to the uh, more rapid aging of cells. But that's a whole different uh, uh, video. What I want to say now, though, is unfortunately metformin uh, can uh, also uh, interfere with uh, the uh, absorption of B12. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're on a... Uh, if you're taking metformin for any purpose, whether it's uh, to treat insulin sensitivity or if you're using it just as a life extension drug, which some people do, uh, you want to uh, take a B12 uh, uh, B12 supplement. Uh, you know, and about 10 to 30 percent of patients who take metformin have reduced B12 absorption. Uh, so uh, you know, that, so you want, again take a uh, B12 supplement. Uh, I, I, like I say, you know, it really doesn't make much difference as far as the B12. When you take the, the most common form of B12 supplement is cyanocobalamin. It's found in most vitamin mineral supplements and most B complex supplements. It's a cheap form. It's a cheap, it's synthetic, very cheap. That's why they use cyanocobalamin, very cheap. There's another one called meth, methyl, uh, cobalamin. As I said before, methylcobalamin is the type of uh, vitamin B12 that's actually active in your body. It's the one that gets into your brain. I myself, uh, you know, I'm on metformin, and, so, and also I, because of that uh, homocysteine factor, I do eat a fairly high protein diet. I take a B12 supplement. I take a, uh, I take a, uh, uh, it's a flavored B12 supplement. It contains, it contains 2,500 micrograms of uh, B12 per tablet. I'm not getting 2,500 micrograms. I'm getting a fraction of that because the intrinsic factor that you know helps to absorb oral uh, B12. It only works. It's it's uh, it's saturated at only two micrograms of B12, which probably explains why the daily requirement for B12 is only 2.4 micrograms. However, as, as I said earlier, uh, you know when you're taking B12 in a, a tablet form, it's a not attached to food proteins, so you don't have to worry about intrinsic factor. But still, it's such a huge vitamin. The odds of me absorbing all 2,500 micrograms are nil. I'm getting a fraction of that, but I am getting enough to offset any problems induced by my 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 my, my by my metformin usage. Now, the the way they test uh, 
B12 to, to, whether, to see whether it's being absorbed is a test called the Schilling test. And also I should point out B12 is water soluble. So excess amounts are excreted without causing harm. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting an overdose of B12. Uh, some recent studies have, have linked uh, extremely high amounts of B12 to certain forms of cancer. However, uh, you know, these uh, studies, <laughs> I got to shake my head. These studies were uh, done in people that smoke cigarettes. I mean, come on, please. And they were trying to say that the P12 is related to cancer in chain smokers. Uh, it, I, I, don't ask me to explain that. That's idiocy. But that's what the, you know, a couple of the websites have these big uh, blogs. Don't take B12. It causes cancer. Forget that. That's, if anything, by by helping with DNA repair, B12 and folic acid help prevent cancer, because when uh, when you get when you have cell mutations, uh, you have a problem with DNA repair. That's the root cause of cancer. So anything that's going to help with DNA repair will have a preventive effect against cancer. So don't believe what you, re you read on these stupid websites. I'm telling you, you'll go crazy with misinformation. That's why you need to subscribe to my Applied Metabolic Newsletter. I'm going to give you the truth. I'm not going to lie. I'm not associated with any supplement companies. But I should. one more thing I want to mention about B12. Years ago, a form of B12 uh, was popular in bodybuilding. It was called dibenkicide, and it was hailed as an anabolic agent. Another name for it was adenyl, adenosyl cobalamin. Now, this is a... Uh, this is a good form of B12. I mean, it's still around. It's about equal to uh, to uh, methylcobalamin as far as efficiency. Uh, but the interesting thing about this particular form of B12, this is the form of B12 that's stored in the liver. When I said the uh, liver can store five years worth of B12, this is the form it's stored in, dibenkicide. It's also called coenzyme B12, which is kind of silly because most of the B vitamins are also oral coenzymes. But that's, again, you know, that's a commercial thing. Anyway, that's about it for... Uh, B12, uh, uh, it's a very important vitamin, especially uh, now, you know, just want to summarize. So you'll, I know I threw a lot of stuff at you. The people that really have to be concerned about B12 are older people because of the, uh, you know, the shrinkage of the stomach and the lack of sufficient hydrochloric acid absorption that you can easily get a B12 deficiency when you're older. And if you don't take care of it, you're going to have the same symptom as Alzheimer's. It's terrible. You know, your memory goes, I mean, you don't, it looks just like Alzheimer's. Older people have to be concerned about it. Vegans, without question, don't believe these vegan schmucks that say, we can get the B12 from vegetables. Don't believe it. It's a, it's a bullshit thing. You have to get, you know, you, you don't have to eat animal foods. If you want to be a vegan, take a B12 supplement and they are synthetic. They're not made from animal, uh, you know, food. So you're not breaking your vegan diet by taking a B12 supplement. But it will protect you against the neurodegeneration that will result if you don't have B12. So that's all I'll say about B12. If you want further information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, exercise science, hormonal therapy, uh, and... Uh, all, and various other topics, you got to subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's 100% truth. I have no access to grind. I'm not associated with any supplement companies. I'm not paid off like a lot of these PhDs got, you know, where they just lie through their teeth, you know, to sell you supplements. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to give you the truth. I'm trying to give you, you know, save, save you money on worthless junk supplements and tell you which ones have some merit. I'm going to tell you the best exercises techniques that I found to work and that science shows works. Uh, and, I, and I base this on 56 years of experience. No PhD can match that. No MD can match that. My empirical experience plus my constant study. I'm always studying, always learning new things. Anyone who reads my newsletter will learn something new. I absolutely guarantee it. It's the best investment you can make, 33 cents a day, to learn the absolute truth. You can't beat that. I'm sorry, you can't beat that. Subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, I know I say this every time, but I have to say it, get yourself a dog. You know, I have my Bruno dog here. He's, he's, only, he's only about, he's very quiet. He's only about a foot away from me, but you don't hear him. One of these days, I'll bring him into the video so you can see him. He's a great little guy. He's my best friend. I love this dog. So, you know, I mean, you'll be happy. I mean, my dogs, they, I don't get depression because of my dogs. They just, they make me smile, you know. Anyway, go, go adopt a dog. You won't, you won't be sorry. Take care.